Structures of ionic solids. So many ionic compounds have crystalline stru structures that are very similar to the unit cells that we've been looking at. The difference is that when you have an ionic compound, you have two different types of ions. You have a cation and an anion. And so that's going to change up those cells, uh, unit cells a little bit because the cells we were looking at, all of the spheres in there were the same. And in an ionic compound, that's not true. Um, when we're talking about an ionic compound, the coordination number is slightly different. It's not the number of spheres that, the, that any given sphere is in contact with. It's the number of close cation-anion interactions. So those are the attractive forces that lower potential energy. Um, usually, in general, um, if the cation and anion are similar in size, you're going to have a higher coordination number than if one of them is much larger than the other. That's just general. So as we look at these crystal structures, they have to balance coordination number. They're trying to maximize the coordination number. But then we also have to have charge neutrality, and we have to accommodate different ion sizes. So we're going to look at a couple of different scenarios. The first is where you have an ionic solid with ions of similar sizes. An example of this is um, cesium chloride. The cesium ion and the chloride ion are similar in size. And so what happens is the cesium ions, I'm sorry, the chloride ions are going to occupy the lattice points of a simple cubic unit cell. And then one cesium atom will fit into the center of that. I know that this looks like a body-centered cubic cell, doesn't it? It looks very much like those pictures of body-centered uni cubic unit cells. The difference is, when we're talking about the, the, um, the unit structure, we're looking at only one kind of ion. So we describe this in terms of the chloride ions, and we think of the other ion as fitting in between the structure made by the first ion. Does that make sense? So we're only looking at the green balls here, and that's a simple cubic unit cell. So the coordination number is eight. So we're looking at the cesium ion and how many anions is it in direct contact with or in close contact with. And it's in contact with each of the ions at, at the corners. And so the coordination number is eight. If we talk about how many ions are in the unit cell, Remember that only one-eighth of each of these ions at the corners is in the cubic unit cell. So there's one anion and then one cation. So there's one of each ion in there. Calcium sulfide is another ionic compound with this same structure. Any questions? Simple cubic unit cell. Yeah. So the ones we talked about were the simple cubic unit cell, the face-centered cubic unit cell, body-centered cubic unit cell, and hexagonal, closest packed. Does that mean they still sort of fall under those titles? Or they, they do with modifications. So this is the simple cubic unit cell. The difference is that now we have another ion fitting into the holes between the lattice points. So this, this cesium ion in the middle is not considered one of the lattice points. Just the chloride ions are. Okay? If we have different ion sizes, um, things change up a little bit. So if we look at sodium chloride, the sodium ion is much smaller than the chloride ion. If ion size were the only consideration, we could get a lot of sodium ions around a single chloride ion. If you look at this structure, there's a lot of space in here. You could fit more of these sodium ions in there. But that's not going to happen because overall the, the compound has to be neutral and charged. You have to have one sodium ion for each chloride ion. So charge neutrality requires that each sodium ion is surrounded by an equal number of chloride ions. So that limits the coordination number to six. This is a face-centered cubic structure. So we're, again, we're looking at the green spheres 
and we see we've got you know green spheres at each corner and then we have one at each face so this is the face centered cubic and then the sodium ions are fitting in between are you okay with that so we call it by the type of Unicell it is based on the larger. Well, it, it's act. It's this is actually called a rock salt structure, so it does have a different name than face centered cubic, but it's based on face centered cubic, and so um, it's sort of a perspective thing. Which side are you looking at? Are you looking at the chloride ion or are you looking at the sodium ion? I think in general we look at the larger one. But here, here we're looking at the chloride ion, and so the chlorides are in a face-centered cubic structure, and the sodium ions are fitting in between. So each of these unit cells is going to contain four cations and four anions. Are you okay with that? Yes. That's a good question. What would this be if you looked at the small, if you looked at the sodium ions instead of the chloride ions? I think for this example, it would be the same. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily true for all of them. When the size difference is even larger, as in zinc sulfide, the coordination number drops to four. So this is called the zinc blend structure. And looking at the sulfide ions, we have a face-centered cubic structure. And the zinc ions now, instead of being along the edges here, like they were for the um, sodium chloride one, do you see how here the sodium ions are along the edges of the cube? In the zinc blend, they're not along the edges. They're inside in tetrahedral holes. So four of these sulfide ions make a tetrahedra and uh, tetrahedron, and the zinc ion fits inside the hole. This doesn't happen with sodium chloride because the sodium's too large to fit in the hole. And so it goes in between. But here the zinc ions are smaller relative to the size of the sulfides, and so they fit into these little holes. This gives us a coordination number of four instead of six. Um, on the exam, how would you ask a How would you ask a question about this on an exam? That's an excellent question. Um, I will be posting very shortly, as soon as I get through this other list of things that are more pressing deadlines, I will be posting um, practice exam questions. Yeah, because that's a really good question. And, and some of this is really hard to test you on. Um, just don't. Yeah, just don't. Um, what, I, what I really want you to get out of this is just a general understanding of there are different ways that ions will pack together. Um, and, and just to have a basic understanding of that. I know I had a student um, that I was tutoring once who was going into um, taking some engineering classes and his instructor in 1A had skipped this topic and he got into his engineering class and he was really struggling because they were talking about face-centered cubic and, and body-centered cubic and he had no idea what that was and so he was trying to teach himself this stuff on the side while trying to keep up with everything else and he ended up dropping the class that semester to catch up. So this is used in some aspects of other, other classes that you may take in the future. Is it critical to passing this class? No. No, it isn't. You can pass this class just fine without any of this. But it is in the course outline, so we're going to go over it. So the ratio is still stated to one to one in the cubic structure? The, the, the ratio of cation to anion is defined by the charges. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to look at what happens if the charges are not equal. Okay. 
So in this one, we should remember from the previous section that when you have a face-centered cubic, it has four of that atom in it, right? So we've got four sulfide ions in here, and there will also be four zinc ions. Because the charges are minus two and plus two, it has to have an equal number. And within each unit cell, that number has to be, that ratio has to be correct. Any questions about this one? What if you have an unequal number of ions? Something like calcium fluoride. There are two fluoride ions for every calcium ion. Well, that has to affect the crystal structure. Many such compounds where they have a one to two cation to anion ratio adopt what's called the fluorite structure. It's named fluorite because that's the name of this mineral, calcium fluoride. So here we have the calcium ions are in a face-centered cubic structure and the fluoride ions are fitting into all eight of the tetrahedral holes so that we, we can accommodate eight fluoride ions in here. So the unit cell then is going to contain four cations and eight anions. Um, if you're looking at, if you're taking the perspective, no, never mind, don't scratch that. If you have a compound where you have a two to one ratio where there's two cations to one anion, an example of that um, might be something like calcium, no, that's backwards. Let's say silver sulfide where there's two cations and one anion. It's going to be very similar to this, but the cations and the anions are going to be swapped places. And then that's called an antifluorite structure. Any questions? The, so this is a possible type of, of uh, exam question. Which compound is most likely to crystallize in the zinc blend structure? Well, what do we know about the zinc blend structure? Well, let's go back and look at it. So this is the zinc blend structure. This is where we have uh, large size differences in the ions. And what's the ratio of cation to anion? One to one, right? One of each. So then we, we look at these choices here. Could magnesium chloride take on a zinc blend structure? No. It would probably do the, the fluorite structure because it has a one to two radio, uh, ratio. So it can't be this one. So then we're choosing between rubidium chloride and copper one iodide. So what we want to do is see what kind of a, a difference in size do we have here? I did these yesterday, but I don't remember the numbers. Just look at the difference in the radius, 181 minus 148. 33. That's part of 33. 33 picometer difference in the radius. And this other one is bigger, 216 minus 96 on 120. Picometers. Now, if you look at this difference in size, okay, so each of these has a radius of 148, 181. Those are pretty big. This difference is pretty small compared to the radius size, right? Here we've got um, 96 and 216, and the difference here is actually larger than the radius of the copper ion. This is a very large difference in radius. The zinc blend structure happens when you have a big difference in ion sizes. And so that's how you would choose C as the correct answer. Okay? Questions?